So today's MS20 patch video is going to be all about frequency modulation and the momentary switch. On a really basic level, there are two frequency modulation knobs for the MS20. First one, by default, does frequency modulation uh, from the modulation generator. The second one does frequency modulation through envelope generator 1. But being that it's semi-modular, you can change what these knobs do by patching something into the total knob, or the total jack, which affects the MG total external knob, and by patching something into the frequency uh, jack, which will change the EG1 external knob. And the only caveat to that being that if you patch something into the total, the first jack for VCO1, uh, whatever you patch them will also change the the knobs for the cutoff frequency modulation these two so if you patch something into vco2 frequency it changes this knob if you patch something into the first the total it affects all three of these knobs um, for frequency modulation though we're affecting the oscillators we're not uh, like anything that we do with the filters is post fm so if you like say self oscillate your filter your frequency modulation knobs will have no effect on that sound. If you want to change that sound, you'll have to do it in filter modulation. Um, but let's just hear what the uh, the default frequency modulation sounds like. So right now I have the MS20 set up so the filters are all open, there's no frequency modulation, um, there's no cutoff frequency modulation, and it's just the first oscillator playing a basic square wave with a little bit of release on it. So if we put up the frequency modulation for the modulation generator, we get this. So that's, you know, the ramp down, and you can make it ramp up. That's cool. And then with envelope generator one, uh, envelope generator one is, is a little bit weird. It's a delay attack release envelope. Um, which means that when it's triggered, it's st like it goes through its delay. If there's a delay, it like basically it just waits, and then it has an attack. And if there's no attack, then it starts at its maximum value, and then there's a release. So instead of talking about the envelope, I'll just let you hear what it does. So right now I'm setting it up so that it has a medium attack and a medium release. If I let go, it'll go back down. So if I put the attack up really high, then when I press a key, it'll take a long time for the pitch to go up. So if you make those shorter, you get those sort of effects. So that's all well and good, but I want those FM effects to be stronger. Uh, I want the, the pitch to go higher. I mean, you can do that with the oscillator. But that's not really what I want. I want the FM to be stronger. So the way that you do that is with patching. Um, so you can patch other, mod other like, um, modules that aren't the modulation generator or the envelope generator one into the frequency modulation slots, or you can take those original functions and patch them back into the same places, which basically doubles their effect. So for instance, envelope generator one, if I take the out from envelope generator one and patch it into the frequency jack for VCO2, which is this knob, it's the same knob that, you know, that's like the same function already, then instead of, instead of that, we get a much stronger FM effect. So you can already get a much cooler noise there than this. So with that, you could also have the, the FM on this first knob be coming from envelope generator one. Then you could also take envelope generator one and patch it to the total and have an additional level of control over that FM effect there, as opposed to just having all of that on one knob. So you can kind of mix and match um, FM strength that way. Um, 
So there's a lot of different ways to, uh, a lot of different sources for FM. I'll go over the, uh, the LFO, or the modulation generator here. If you patch the, uh, the ramp triangle wave into the total, it doesn't have an effect. It doesn't change it, but if you patch the square, it definitely does. I don't really find that to be very useful usually, but that's definitely something that you can do. And so you could make, you know, you could have standard modulation generator FM behavior through the total, and then you could patch the square of the modulation generator into the PCO2 frequency thing. And you can get stuff like this. Whereas before it's just like that, and now it's like that. So that's neat. So what are the other things? Uh, so those are just the behaviors of the modulation generator and envelope generator one, some of them. What are the other things that we can use to apply FM to the synth? Well, we could use the reverse out of envelope generator one. So instead of... So now when I press the key, the pitch goes down, then when I release it, it goes up. And we could send that to the total, and we could have both the regular envelope generator one and the reverse sent, which kind of cancels cancels it out. But you can mix and match and get some interesting stuff there. There's also the sample and hold. Standard sample and hold patch being if you put the pink noise in, and then you take the out and you go to the total, and you take the clock from the square of the modulation generator. You get this random FM patch, which is fine. There's also this modulation VCA, which is used to amplify or change um, a modulation signal. So let me give you an example of, of how we can do that. Um, so let's take the out of envelope generator 1 and patch it into VCO2 frequency slot. So we get this behavior out of it. Alright, so instead of sending it to VCO2 right away, send it into the modulation VCA, and then back out of the modulation VCA into VCO2. But now let's control that with the mod, uh, with the, uh, the mod wheel. So right now the mod wheel is um, in the middle, and there's no effect. If I move it up, you start to hear that original effect, and if I put it all the way at the top, it's really, really, that's, that modulation signal is really strong now. Here's it without that signal, that's just normal, and now here's regular with uh, modulation VCA. And the control input for the modulation VCA can be a lot of things. Um, can be like the reverse out of envelope generator 1, the reverse out of envelope generator 2, it can be um, modulation generator, so let's take the ramp, uh, the, uh, ramp triangle from uh, modulation generator. Or we could take the reverse out of envelope generator 2 for that. So there's interesting things that you can do with that modulation VCA. There's also just straight noise. Uh, you can pink noise. Or white noise. Or a mix of pink and white noise. So 
There's also the modulation generator, or not the, the, the mod wheel itself. That type of stuff. You could also use the external signal processor. Um, for instance, you could get some white noise sent into the signal processor, and then you could take the frequency, the voltage out, and send that to the total. And so you can adjust the signal with the CV adjust, or carve out a bit of it. So that can be interesting. If you have like a nice clean um, modulation, say from the modulation generator, and then you want to add like a little bit of randomness to that. So here, let me see if I can dial that in. So let's get something coming from the modulation generator. Right, now let's add a little bit of that noise signal. And all this is without any any filters, like our filters are completely open, no resonance, no frequency cutoff modulation. So I mean, with this as a starting point, you already have a pretty complex thing to then sculpt with your regular subtractive tools. Um, some other things to do before we get to the momentary switch, there's also the envelope out of the external signal processor that can be used. Um, and then of course any other gear that you might have that sends any signal, like for instance this Mografoger pedal has an oscillator out and an LFO out that can be used. So, so I'll take the LFO out from that. So this is faster and I changed the wave there. So you can get frequency modulation from other places. Um, but I really wanted to figure out how to get the momentary switch in there because I saw a patch video where someone pressed the momentary switch and the MS-22 did like this weird arpeggio type thing and I was like, wow, how, how, does, how does that work, right? So what we need to do first um, is go back to that sample and, and sample and a hold patch for a second. So pink noise to in, out to total clock from the square at the modulation generator. Right? So I like that behavior where I hit the key and then it does a bunch of like pitches, but I don't want it to be random. I want it to be like going up or going down. So the way that you do this, instead of going in from pink noise, you go in from envelope generator one out. So now when I press um, this key down, it should just go in that nice ascending pattern. And since it's going through the sample and hold and being clocked through the speed of the modulation generator on the square, because if I, here, like, it only works if you have it on the square. Here, I'm going to turn the waveform the other way. And now it just goes up. It doesn't cut it. So there's a lot of um, noises that you can get out from here. So, depending on the release and everything. And then you can take the reverse to go down. And right now our amp envelope has no release on it. So if I turn put the release up right so there's lots of cool things to be had there okay um, so to add another layer of interesting stuff to that, instead of going right into the sample and hold, we can go out of the envelope generator one and go into the modulation VCA and then out from the modulation VCA into the sample and hold and then control envelope generator one with say mod wheel. 
So if like that's really really high, I can sneak down the modulation depth so that it's within a comfortable range for what I want. Or you could do it from the reverse out of Envelope Generator 2. But you can also, right now, when we're hitting a key, we're sending out the control voltage, um, but we're, um, you know, to the oscillators. But we're also triggering envelope generator one. We can stop that from happening by patching anything into envelope generator one trigger in. So I patch the momentary switch into envelope generator one trigger in. Now I press the key, just the oscillator, no none of that weird FM stuff. So I can, you know, press the key and have a pattern going, and then invoke, you know that FM when I want it. Now, um, you can also, if you have a stack cable or a multiplier, you can take this momentary switch and also send it to the trigger in. And now, the way that the MS-20 works with uh, triggers and notes, if you're using the trigger in and you just send a trigger, uh, it'll play whatever the pitch of whatever note was last played. So if I hit a, a note here and then trigger it, it'll, um, it'll, it'll be like I'm playing that note. So I'm sending a trigger and a note on with the momentary switch. So if you're just trying to make like a weird noise or anything, you don't have to worry about like, and you just, you know, I always want it to be this pitch, I just want to trigger it until I get it right, you just use your momentary switch. So, you know, I want to tweak the attack time of this and the release of this, maybe I don't want the control coming from, yeah, maybe I want like a shorter, like, sound like that. And the way that Envelope Generator 1 works is pretty nice with the momentary switch because, you know, it has that attack and release time and if you have the release time be long enough, so it, while it's falling, if I press it again and I have a long attack time, I can just kind of push the envelope up and then down, up and down with the, mo with the, the momentary switch. Right? So, um, before we want to go any further, let's talk a bit more about FM and the oscillators, because the oscillators in their waveform are important for FM. Now, most of the time, you actually want a more simplistic starting oscillator. You don't want, like, a very rich oscillator to deal with FM, because you're getting your richness from the frequency modulation. Um, so, right now, we have this... What? should be able to hear something right now. I don't know why I can't. Oh, right. If you have something patched into the trigger in, um, your keyboard doesn't work. Forgot about that. So, right now we have a square wave, which is a relatively rich waveform. Um, let me take the, the trigger out of that module, out of the momentary switch for a moment. So we can change, you know, the oscillator, and that'll change it. You see how, like, that? Like, that's a little bit cleaner and clearer. And that one has, like, some rough edges. I don't really like that so much when I'm going for, like, an FM sound. And the triangle wave is there, but it's so low. It, it's not really all that, all that useful for what I'm trying to get out of it right now. Um, so one of the things that's really nice is that there's a ring mod setting on VCO2. But if you take the waveform of uh, VCO1 and move it all the way to the right, then it basically, ring, the VCO2 basically becomes a sine wave. So here's um, VCO2 with uh, 
where you can actually hear VCO1. You see, it's like really dirty. And if I turn it all the way to the right, Now I basically have a sine wave to play with, which for FM is very useful. So um, having that there is, is nice. But at the same time, sometimes, depending on the timbre you're going for, that can be kind of interesting. That sounds kind of cool. So, now that we have this weird sample and hold um, pattern here, and let's trigger it again with the momentary switch. Okay, so. We're using this sample and hold FM behavior, but we're only we're still only using like one knob right now, and we're not using any frequent any like um, filtering. So we can combine this if you have um, if you have a stack cable. Take the out of the sample and hold, and then you can stack that onto VCO two frequency. You can make this really strong, but since it's passed to the total, that will also modulate the filters if we move up this these, these depth knobs. Um, and here, I'm going to take off the oscillators for a moment, just so we can hear the filter. And I apologize if this is going to be loud and screamy, but yeah. Okay, where is it? All right, so right now we're making the filter self oscillate, and we're sending that same signal that we were using for FM, but we're also sending it to the filter. And right now, since there's nothing patched into the external for the um, the high pass filters, eg two knob, can that does modulation from the amp envelope. So we can use that to make the filter higher or lower. We can also do the same thing for the other filter. Right, so this is without any oscillators, without any FM. So you can have the same type of sound, but coming from different sources, and then you can mix all that together. So let me bring the oscillator back in. And this sounds much different than if I have, you know, no self-oscillating filter. And then, let's see. I don't even need to change this up a little bit. And let's send something else besides this weird sample and hold pattern um, to the frequency modulation from BCO2. So let's try um, let's try the reverse out from envelope generator too. And by the way, envelope generator 2, when you're using it in this fashion, triggering it, um, 
you know, with the momentary switch, the hold time is very useful because when you trigger the note, it'll hold it for you for a long time. So if you, you don't have to like hold the switch down to get what you're after, which is just a note that's, you know, held for a certain amount of time. Especially if you're doing stuff with attacks. Or you could do the reverse of envelope generator one. Now, another thing is that if you patch something into the VCO2 CV in or VCO1 and 2 CV in, you get drastically different effects. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it, especially if you are um, using the ring mod circuit of VCO2, patching the mod wheel into VCO2 CV in. You can see there's a lot of like weird things that you can get into pretty quickly. Um, let's try the external signal processor. So let's get our, our um, FM signal from the frequency to voltage converter. And let's, for the signal, let's use the stock cable to send it that sample and, and send it that same sample and hold pattern. then we can change it. Let's listen to that just by itself. I wonder what would happen if you sent that sample on a hold um, signal to the control input. Hmm, interesting. Let's take this external signal processor signal from noise instead and see what we got there. Sounds like a kettle. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, so, there's lots of things you can do there. Um, you can also get into weird stuff that really shouldn't work, but sometimes gives strange things, like patching um, the two VCO CV ins to each other. Or, <laughs> one of the weird ones, if you have just like patch something into VCO 1 and 2 CV in, get your sound going, and then just like, plug yourself in to it, it makes a cool sound. So if you have music, you can like tap along to this and use, you know, I don't know, it's kind of silly. But, you can also bring in external gear into, uh, into the mix here. So, take our stack cables, and send this same sample and hold. Send the same sample and hold thing to the frequency of our Ogre Froger ring mod. Maybe have the rate of the Mogafoger pedal coming from the rate of the modulation generator. And if you uh, ever just want to like have um, MS20 just play whatever note you last played without having to constantly trigger stuff, you can always just patch white noise to the trigger and. That way I can just have the everything going and only invoke the FM when I want it. Well, 
thing you can try to do is take signal from the sample and hold weirdness and then send it through the external signal processor send that uh, and then send the frequency to voltage converters um, voltage into the frequency of the Mogafoger So, yeah, I think that's all I'll do for now. Stop torturing you with extremely high-pitched noises. I hope this was useful to you in some way. Um, so, cheers. <laughs>